Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Got a bit of a weird one here. Wasn't quite sure what to do with this. Uh, but anyway, we're making a video. So, a Patreon member. Actually, it was the guy that gave us these really cool knives. So, supplied these for unboxing boxes. Uh, anyway, same guy that owns... So, that's Sky Soldier Blades. He also owns SilverKnightPCs.com. And, yeah, recently he came across this. Or a lot of these. So this is meant to be, or is, an RX 580 4GB graphics card. Now he was offered around 3,000 of these. Uh, he could buy them in, I think it was 15 uh, lot quantities for a discount. And then he could just resell them or use them in the pre-built systems that he makes. Anyway, he passed on that because they're not the kind of components he uses in his pre-built systems. He usually sticks to uh, the well-known brands and brands that'll you know, give you a warranty and all that sort of stuff. But these were extremely cheap for RX 580s. But anyway, as I said, he passed on the offer. But yeah, it, because they were so cheap and quite interesting and wasn't sure if they were a scam or not, he decided to buy a couple of them and just check out what the deal was. And he uh, offered one of them to us. Wanted to know if we wanted to buy one. And so, we're, yeah, we bought one. I thought it would make for a pretty cool video, so hopefully it does. Really wasn't sure if it was a scam or not. That's always kind of interesting to look into because if there are large volumes of this particular card floating around, then chances are before too long, some of you guys hunting for deals will run into them. Anyway, the guys at Silver Knight PCs, as I said, bought a few of them. They've tested uh, one of them. They sent me this one and they believed they're probably RX 580s, uh, sorry, RX 480s that have been reflashed to 580s. So not a big deal if that is the case. But anyway, they uh, said they were available in uh, bulk orders of 15. They were $70 US, which is dirt cheap. And that was including shipping as well. So yeah, potential bargain there for anyone trying to get a really cheap RX 580 4GB card. And really, being able to get these for under $100 is pretty awesome. Uh, and then if they were to buy them, just, I think, like I said, they ordered three. So they were $96 uh, US each. So still a really good purchase there. $70 is insane, if it is what it's meant to be. But yeah, $96 for this graphics card. But was it worth buying? <laughs> right now, graphics card scams are running a bit rampant on places such as eBay, uh, for a random example, you see things like, what, GT710s or, yeah, GeForce GT710s, they get sold for, well, they get reflashed and sold as GTX 1050s. Of course, they're, they're definitely not GTX 1050s. So very sad that that thing is becoming quite common on eBay from Chinese sellers. And I haven't looked into it recently. I'm going back quite a few months now, but back then there, there was a lot of them on eBay and eBay didn't seem to be doing anything about cleaning them up. So... Yeah, a bit upsetting there that so many people were getting ripped off thinking they were getting a really good value uh, GT1050. Anyway, I wanted to know if a similar thing was going on with this. Is this like an RX 470 that's been rebadged? We see that sort of thing happen for internet cafes and things like that over in China. Is it an RX 460 or is it something worse? So we're going to find out. But yeah, on initial sort of inspection, I had definitely suspected this to be a scam. So right away, not sure how well you guys can see this on the camera, I might throw up some B-roll, but we have ATI branding on the fans. So yeah, ATI branding in 2019. I'm not even sure who still has ATI stickers. Bit of a blast from the past, that one. I was yeah kind of shocked when I saw that. Uh, for our younger viewers who don't know who ATI is, well, the reason you don't know is because AMD acquired them way back in 2006. So yeah, ATI hasn't been a thing for over a decade now. Anyway, apparently this is an ATI Radeon graphics card. Actually, no, that's not even correct. It is an, I can get, I'll get this out here. This is a bit of a, a laugh, this one. It's an ATI Pradeon. Yep, it's a Pradeon. So that's what the, the disc here, uh, reads, if only I had an optical drive so I could read what's on this ancient media frisbee. But anyway, whoop, whoop, whoop. so getting back to the card itself, as I said, I suspected it was a bit of a scam, but when I picked the thing up for the first time, I quickly started to, well, I had my doubts that maybe it's not a scam. That's because it weighs 
almost as much as this massive gigabyte Aorus XTR RX 580. So yeah, these things are, I think this is just not even 100 grams heavier, something like that. This one here, uh, this is 830 grams. So that may surprise some of you. It's a very heavy little graphics card and that would indicate that there is a huge amount of copper in this thing. So we'll have a look at that in a minute. Um, actually, we'll do that now. So if we whip the cooler off, which we'll have a quick intermission while I undo these four screws. Uh, give me a moment. There is only four screws holding on the cooler, so it's extremely quick and easy to get off. And as you can see here, it does have a it does have an aluminium backplate as well, uh, which is relatively thick. I'll just wriggle that off. I've probably lost that screw forever now. One moment, I'll just see if I can recover it. You know what, I'll just look for that screw later. Not super important. What I wanted to show you is this. Uh, that is a very big copper base plate. It looks, I haven't actually measured it. I probably should have done that, but it looks like it's about one and a half mil thick, something like that, maybe only a mil, but it is a big copper base plate anyway. It's quite heavy. We've got four nickel plated copper heat pipes. But what's really interesting, What's, what's really quite bizarre about this cooler is it is a quite a good quality cooler. The card does run quite cool, but what's bizarre is the fact that only, well, just over half the thermal pads are there for the GDDR5 memory. So half the memory is just completely naked. It's coming in contact with nothing. So maybe that means EVGA are the ones that made these things. <laughs> The cooler also has two aluminium fin stacks and the smaller fin array is connected to the base plate via four copper heat pipes. Anyway, it's a pretty decent looking cooler. Shame about the quality control on those thermal pads though. And the guys at Silver Knight PCs uh, checked the other models for me and they found they were also missing some thermal pads. The PCB design and componentry also looks pretty legit and the GPU does appear to be an RX 580. It also looks like a fairly decent five plus one phase VRM as well. So everything here checks out. Throwing it in the test system and it's definitely looking like an RX 580, an underclocked RX 580, but an RX 580 all the same. It has an OEM device ID while the sub vendor is listed as AMD slash ATI. Again, pretty funny to see ATI there. Of course, we only have four gigabytes of memory, but there are four gigabyte 580s and this was advertised to only have four gigabytes of memory. So out of the box, this thing runs at just 1000 megahertz and that's a locked frequency. So it has no ability to boost beyond that without you going and manually overclocking it. So that is the operating frequency of this particular model out of the box. This to me suggests that these cards were intended to be mining cards. And because of this, the max core clock and the voltages have been locked to protect the card from 24 seven mining. And I'd say the out of the box specs have been calculated for maximum power and hash rate efficiency. And that's of course to maximize profit. The memory is also clock at just 1600 megahertz, so that's 6.4 gigabits per second, and not the typical eight gigabits per second memory. With the standard BIOS, the card can only be overclocked as high as 1.3 gigahertz. And again, this would be the peak operating frequency as there is no type of GPU boost technology enabled. I was only able to hit 1.8 gigahertz for the memory, and this did limit us to 7.2 gigabits per second. Using ATI flash, yeah, it is still called ATI flash. Anyway, I was able to unlock the frequency cap and hit a stable 1450 megahertz. Not amazing, but that's much closer to the full potential of an RX 580. So let's see how that stacks up against the Gigabyte Aorus RX 580 XTR. Okay, so out of the box, the ATI Pradeon performs much like an RX 570 due to the heavy underclocking. Boosting it up to the maximum frequency using the unedited BIOS, saw a nice 18% performance boost in Battlefield 5, basically placing it on par with the stock Aorus 580. Then with a little tinkering, we managed 82 FPS with the 1450 MHz overclock, and that's basically RX 590 performance. Results in Far Cry New Dawn weren't quite as impressive, but here the Aorus card does clock quite well. Still at 1450 MHz, we were basically able to match it despite the lower clocked GDDR5 memory. Performance trends seen in Shadow of the Tomb Raider were similar to what we saw in Battlefield 5. Out of the box, we're looking at RX 570 light performance. A little down here, but not really a big difference. Then a quick and easy overclock got us to RX 580 performance, and a BIOS flash allowed us to hit RX 590 performance. Then finally, we have World War Z, and here the overclocks again got the ATI Pradeon back on track, though out of the box, it was pretty slow. So there you have it, the ATI Pradeon. 
not really sure what to call this thing. I mean, it is a four gigabyte RX 480. But yeah, I'm going with ATI Pradeon because it's kind of funny. But anyway, it seems pretty clear that these things were purpose built or repurposed for mining. And then, uh, well, the mining boom stopped booming. And then the distributors that deal with these sort of gray market cards, well, they were, they were left with thousands of them. And I suppose they have to try and make some money off them, so they turned to boutique PC builders like Silver Knight PCs and tried to flog them off to them. But as I said, the guys over at Silver Knight PCs didn't buy these in bulk and they won't be appearing in their pre-built systems. They'll be sticking to uh, the more well-known brands. So yeah, they didn't buy them, but they picked up a couple of them and they offered some to, well, guys like me, I think. Maybe one of them went Gamers Nexus way as well, so perhaps they'll be doing something with it. Uh, but anyway, that's that's pretty much it. They are currently listed over on Alibaba as China Cheap Price Wholesale AMD Miner RX 580 8GB DDR5 256-bit graphics card. And they're selling for between $90 and $110 US. I also noticed over on Newegg.com that you can buy a Corn AMD RX 580 4GB for $110 US, sold and shipped by Corn Electronics. Corn Electronics is a subsidiary of Corn Group. So basically it's a corn cartel making their natural progression into PC gaming. Alternatively, right now you can buy a refurbished MSI RX 584 GB armor card from Newegg for $120 US, opposed to the $170 US you'll pay for a brand new RX 580 from, well, the usual suspects. So is it worth saving around $60 on one of these gray market models? Honestly, no, I don't believe it is. It's just too sketchy. And without a warranty, you might as well just buy an MSI, a SUS Gigabyte or any other quality AIB model secondhand. You get no reassurances with these gray market deals. And as we've seen with my particular model here and the other models that the guys at Silver Knight PCs bought, the the quality control isn't great and then performance out of the box isn't good either because these weren't designed for gamers. But you can solve that, but yeah, for the other for the other reasons I just mentioned, it's probably not worth the time and effort. And yeah, I think that's gonna do it for the ATI Pradeon. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, uh, subscribe for more content that will be quite different to this content. This was sort of a one-off for us, but yeah, I thought this was worth taking a look at because uh, it'll be a similar deal to things like the the Corn RX 580. Probably worth avoiding those unless you are confident you can get some sort of warranty with them. Anyway, yep, that's going to do it for this one. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.